Welcome to this week's Compound Your Knowledge, where we review uh, three papers from the Alpha Architect blog. This week, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a, a paper called A Simple Analysis of 2018 U.S. Factor Returns. We'll be looking at Warren Buffett is wrong about options except, and we'll be looking at equity investing is riskier than you probably expected. I have Jack Vogel with us, our CIO at Alpha Architect. Um, so we'll just we'll start with the with the first paper, um, which is a simple analysis of 2018 U.S. factor returns. Uh, Jack, you wrote this. What is the overall goal of this paper? Yeah. So the idea behind this was to just kind of look back on 2018 returns. Um, most things in equity went down, unfortunately, in 2018. But I also wanted to dig in and see how different factors and different ways uh, you can measure the factor sensor's value did. And so kind of what I did uh, in this post was I looked specifically at um, e the positions held in uh, you know, the ETF IWB, that's the Russell 1000, uh, that tracks the Russell 1000 index. And what Russell, I Russell 1000 is? Is the, is the thousand largest firms yeah. generally yeah. around that. And so what I did was, the first thing I did was I tried to look just how value did, right? And so how did I do this and how did I do all factors? I split all of the holdings, so if you had a thousand, I put them into, you know, 10 buckets, yeah. right, on each measure. And so first I did value, I used uh, five measures of value. Um, and as you can see, as I show in picture one uh, in the post, you know, basically every single value long short portfolio, unfortunately, underperformed or had a negative return in 2018. So no matter how you measured value, yeah. right, even if you did it in a long short manner, you would have had a negative return. Yeah. And you looked at it by enterprise multiples, which is EBIT to total enterprise value, uh, book to market, earnings yield, which is the inverse of PE, uh, cash flow to price, and then sales credit. So those are the five five value streams you looked at. Yeah, and then what I did in the second image, just to highlight, because most factor investors don't actually buy long short portfolios, right? They're more they're taking tilts through you know like a smart beta type product. And in such a case, usually what you're doing is you're buying like long only value, right? Yeah. And so in the second image, what I showed was the value stock portfolio and the growth stock portfolio, and the reason the long short is negative is because the value stocks on all five of those measures, your value portfolio underperformed the growth portfolio. Yeah. So, so growth stocks did well in 2018. And Still all negative though, by oh, the way. Okay. But but the, the, so that's why the long short, the long short was negative because value did worse than growth. Yeah. And and because that that's something that you know you, you talk most factor investors don't do a long short portfolio, right? Um, they, they're going to do like a long only where you get a tilt because uh, the biggest factor, hey, we, we always spend all this time talking about factors, but the biggest factor is just beta. Yeah. Right? So when you, do, when you do a long short value factor, you're removing beta. You're, you're trying to exclude down to just the value factor, correct? Yeah. You're, you're attempting to do that. Attempt. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so, then, so then you looked at other popular factors. Um, and you looked at how they perform. So you looked at momentum, you looked at size, beta, again, mm -hmm. beta is the biggest factor, and ROA versus uh, the un the universe of stocks, that 1,000 stock. What, what did those results show? How did, how did these factors hold? Yeah, so again, in like the third image in my post, I looked at the long short portfolios, yeah. right? And so in that image, what you see is that size had a, a negative return, right? So the long, short yeah, size yeah, factor, yeah. where you go long, small caps, short, large, mega caps, yeah. was negative last year. Yeah. Of the other three factors, right, momentum, uh, beta, meaning like low beta versus high beta. Yeah. Uh, so momentum, beta, and quality as measured by ROA, they actually had a positive long, short return. But as mentioned before, most investors aren't actually tilting their portfolio towards just a long short, they actually do like long only. So in the fourth image of my post, what I showed is, while the long shorts for those were still positive, the long only portfolios actually were all negative. 
right? So even though high momentum did better than low momentum stocks last year, low momentum stocks on net still had a down year, which makes sense because they're exposed to market risk or beta. So, so 2018, almost everything was down. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, and across factor investing, the two ones that I would say did the worst were tilts towards value and size, uh-huh. and that's just at least looking at you know the Russell 1000, uh, the Russell uh, around the top thousand largest stocks in the U.S. Um, and again, it's only in the U.S. Yeah. So take the flip side of that. So what did the best then would have been large caps and uh, growth, right? Well, well low, uh, probably low vol, actually. Low yeah. vol, though. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, uh, and then w- w- what's the overall conclusion on this paper? This it, it was just paper. mainly to be descriptive and understand. And, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, if you're a small cap value or tilt towards value and small, it kind of makes sense, unfortunately, why last year's uh, returns occurred. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, the next paper we looked at is, uh, it, was, it was written by a friend of the firm, John Seed. He's an RIA out of Illinois. Um, and the, the paper was titled, Warren Buffett is Wrong About Options, Except. Um, so uh, what, what's the story here, Jack? And, and how was Warren Buffett the exception to the rule on options? Yeah, so this was a, a neat article that was written. It was actually written uh, the end of December. So we had a little break here. So we were just pulling a couple of these, but this is an article I I thought was worth discussing. So um, an interesting point that John discusses in here has to do with, you know, Warren Buffett's annual letter, I believe it was in 2007, where he discusses how Berkshire Hathaway actually sold put options, right? Um, And he kind of discusses, talks about it, and what, Warren Buffett does say is, you know, that there can be, in his opinion, there's like inefficiencies in black shoes, right? So John goes through and actually does the math and shows, well, actually, there there really aren't, and the math makes sense. Um, But, so I think it's neat, if you're interested in put options and understanding it, uh, you know, you you, you should walk through the beginning part of that post. Now, the second part talks about the accept, or how, like, Warren Buffett has an exception. So... An interesting thing is for in for can you break that down like like w- w- what is the what is kind of the exception like it's like okay Warren Buffett was saying you can do what well, well no so the exception is that for most investors yeah right the if you sell a put option you have to like post collateral because yeah. what happens is you know if markets go down and you sold a put option now you're going to be at a loss potentially. Right, so if I sold a put at a thousand, market went to five hundred, yeah. I have to make that up. Yeah. So most people have to post what's known as collateral, yeah. and that can vary and change. Yeah. Right, Warren Buffett was the exception because whoever bought the put options, they actually agreed to a provision whereby Warren Buffett or Berkshire Hathaway does does not have to post any collateral until the very end. So, you know, if, so if you sell the put options for, let's say you get a billion dollars in premium, Mm -hmm. right? Most individuals are gonna have to post, let's say 20%, or it's gonna vary from day to day, but let's just say 20%. Thereby, you know, of your billion, you have 200 million that you can't really do anything with, or you have to keep it in cash. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but in Warren Buffett's case, he sold put options, received cash, and, you know, basically, can then invest for 20 years, yeah. right? Um, and so that's really what the exception is, is that Warren Buffett has this provision whereby Berkshire Hathaway doesn't have to post collateral. Yeah. Um, and, and just looking at it, I was looking at the puts that he sold. So he sold three of them. Um, they were on the S&P 500, big win for Berkshire and Warren. He sold it on the Nikkei. It's currently only about 10% above his put level. And then he sold one on the Euro stock which is actually down like 25%, mm. right? So uh, it's an interesting article. I think it's uh, worth everyone reading. Yeah, so and that goes back to a little bit of what some people critique Warren Buffett for. It's uh, do uh, do what I say, not what I do a lot, right? Warren Buffett tells you buy 90% SPY, 10% treasuries. 
Um, but he doesn't care. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, at some level in there, he actually has taken a bullish bet on equities, right? Because if you sell puts, you're thereby assuming there's going to be certain growth rates in the future. Yeah. Okay, so then the third paper, equity investing, equity investing is a riskier than you probably expected. Um, this comes from, from Tommy Johnson. She summarized uh, this paper by two legends of the ETF, or ETF, the two legends of the financial uh, industry, academic, uh, Eugene Fama, uh, which was Wes's advisor at the University of Chicago, and Ken French. Um, the purpose of this study was to examine the changes in the distribution of the U.S. equity risk premium as the return horizon varies from monthly, annually, three-year, five-year, 10-year, 20-year, and 30-year periods. Jack, break this down to English for us. For starters, uh, what does it mean when they say they're, they are examining the distribution of the U.S. equity risk premium? Yeah, so first off, it's important to understand what is the U.S. equity risk premium, Yep. right? It is the average, it's the return above, you know, usually one month T-bills is what they look at. Right. And historically, this was you know a high number, right? Whereby equities had a higher return than one month T bills, yeah. right? So when we talk about the distribution of it, what that means is you know if you look at your uh, monthly equity return premium, like in the past it was around six yeah. percent over the time period that Tom and French look at, right? And so what does that mean? Well, six percent divided by twelve is fifty basis points a month, right? So your average one at a monthly level is, you know, 50 basis points. Um, but at a monthly level, it's going to have a lot of standard deviation, right? And actually, they find the standard deviation to be around like 4.5%. So when they say they're looking at the distribution, what they're doing is they're changing time periods from one month out know, to a year, three year, five year, 10, 20, 30, and then showing what is just the distribution of returns historically. They use simulated data. You could look at other data as well, but um, you know you have to read the paper for the exact simulation details. Yeah. Okay. Good. So so now we, we understand what the distribution of equity risk premium is. Uh, let's go further on the summary. The Fama and French were looking at how the distribution of that U.S. equity risk premium changes as the return horizon changes. So from monthly again all the way out to thirty years. Um, what did that show? So what it shows is the longer, at least in this time period, right, the longer one was invested, i.e. if you start at one year, go to five, go to 10, go out to 30, right, your distribution starts out kind of normal and then it starts just moving more towards positive or like sliding to the right, mm -hmm. right? So your left tail or the negative events that occur at the one year and three year uh, periods kind of disappear and you know you, you your distribution slides more towards positive returns because yeah. over one year three year you can be down 40 percent yeah and actually i think that's kind of like the big takeaway from the paper is just showing that at like three like so the, my big takeaway from this paper is that you know at at one month clearly like the standard that your your premium is 50 basis points yeah your deviation is like nine times that Right, yeah. four and a half percent. Yeah. But even they just showed historically, like if you were at three or five years, there's a pretty high chance you're going to have like a negative return, yeah. right? And it's actually non-trivial even out at like 10, 20 years, yeah. right? So you know, investing in equities relative to cash is risky, yeah. right? And that's kind of I think their whole takeaway is that just it's people need to remember <laughs> it's not guaranteed, yeah. right? It, it, there is still some risk embedded in that. As, as we saw in December, things can go south pretty quickly and pretty sharply. As we've seen in December, they can also, or January, sorry, they can also come back uh, quick too. So far. So far. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, all right. That's what we got for the Compound Your Knowledge show this week. Um, we'll be back next week with three more papers. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed in this recording are the personal views of the participants as of the date indicated and do not necessarily reflect the views of Alpha Architect itself. Nothing contained in this recording constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice and should not be viewed as a current or past recommendation 
or a solicitation of an offer to buy or sell any securities or to adopt any investment strategy. The information in this recording is based on current market conditions which will fluctuate and may be superseded by subsequent market events or for other reasons. Alpha Architect does not resume any duty to update forward-looking statements. The information in this recording has been developed internally and or obtained from sources believed to be reliable. However, no representation or warranty, express or implied, is made or given by or on behalf of Alpha Architect as to the accuracy and completeness or fairness of the information contained in this recording. Any liability as a result of this recording, including direct, indirect, special, or consequential loss or damage is expressly disclaimed. Copyright 2018, Alpha Architect LLC, all rights reserved.